the nanorobot we designed and fabricated um, is a, a machine that can be programmed to autonomously uh, recognize target cells and deliver payloads to those cells. The basic idea is to make uh, a cage or a basket that protects a fragile or toxic uh, or precious payload and only releases it when it's at the right moment. The nanorobot is capable of um, loading a, a cargo and then delivering that cargo to a cell surface and specifically to a cell surface that ex is expressing some, some marker that we've programmed the nanorobot to recognize. And that's done with, in a logical control where the surface of the basket responds to the surface of the cells that it's targeting. DNA origami is a method that we use in the lab in order to create custom nanoscale shapes that are atomically precise. And the way that this works is that we take a long single-stranded template strand of DNA and combine it with hundreds of short strands that we've designed and ordered from a company. Um, and when we mix these strands together that, and give them time to self-assemble, at the end, we get a, a custom desired shape. Uh, the nanorobot that we designed actually looks like a, an open-ended barrel or a clamshell that has two halves. So the two halves of this open-ended barrel or a clamshell are uh, linked together by flexible DNA hinges and the entire structure is held shut by um, latches or locks that are actually DNA double helices. In order to load a payload, we need to first attach a DNA strand to the payload, which is complementary to sequences or anchor strands that are hanging on the inside of the barrel. So in a separate reaction, we connect that linker strand to our payload, and then we mix everything together, and the payload is able to diffuse through the open ends of the barrel and bind to the inside. Now each of these locks is a DNA double helix, uh, which means it has two strands in duplex. The way it works is that um, in the absence of the key, which is a, a molecular protein, uh, the duplexes are held sufficiently strong to, to maintain the entire structure uh, closed. But when the key is present, that piece of DNA that we designed to recognize that key um, switches to bind to the key, and the duplex uh, zips open. And when both of these zip open, the entire structure can open. It's, it's very like a combination lock. So the most significant observation we made was that the nanorobot is capable of recognizing a small population of target cells within a large population of bystander cells which should be left alone. Uh, and the way it does that is that while all cells share the same drug target that we want to attack, only those target cells express the proper set of keys that open the nanorobot and therefore only they will be attacked by the nanorobot and, and by the drug. Um, and that's what we did. We mixed a small population of target cells within a large population of healthy cells, and the nanorobot was capable of attacking only these with almost zero collateral damage. So one series of experiments that we did was to demonstrate that the nanorobots could target specific cell lines depending on what locks we chose. So we made several different versions of the nanorobot with different locks that held it shut and then mix that with a series of six different cancer cell lines and demonstrate that we could specifically target cell lines depending on which combinations of locks we cho chose and which keys were present on those cell surfaces. So we designed a nanorobot that was bearing a functional payload. So it had antibody fragments that were able to communicate with a cell and induce it to apoptose or self-destruct. So there's a general growing need for uh, smarter pharmaceutical or therapeutics. Uh, the amount of information you can pack into a small molecule drug, as they're sometimes called, is, is quite limited. And so something intermediate in size but still uh, quite smart in terms of its ability to sense its environment home to the right place and do the right thing is uh, clearly needed. The advantage of using DNA, in addition to being uh, one of the most programmable materials where it's actually predictable what shape it will have based on the computer design, another big advantage is its compatibility with uh, 
biologicals and human body in particular. And uh, it, uh, it can be adjusted as to how stable it is, and when it breaks down, it's, it's uh, completely biocompatible. So the potential of this technology is not only in medical therapeutics, but potentially mer medical diagnostics, where you want to be smart about where and when you're obtaining information, not just delivering payloads. And then there are applications beyond medicine, basically any place where you would like to have a smart device that's smaller than uh, electronics, um, uh, this might be uh, a good candidate.